Aloha from Hawaii. So much idiocy this week when it comes to money, finance, how people want to spend money, how they want to make money. So much that I even qualified for my own Dumb and Dumber list. So let's get started from dumb through several dumberers to dumbest. Number one, dumb, Jesse Smollett. Apparently he thought this noose MAGA thing was going to help him get a raise. Instead, he's destroyed his career. Dumberer. Charlie Munger, who is richer than I will ever be, this 97-year-old billionaire whose BFFs with Warren Buffett has designed the biggest, most expensive dorm in the University of California history. It's for UCSB. It's going to house over 4,500 students. It looks like a federal prison. It's called Dormzilla. Rooms will average about 10 by 7 feet for one person, and 94% of the rooms have no windows. And Munger says, hey, you have to make trade-offs. Uh, there are great open spaces, and he thinks overall it will keep the suicide rate low. Next, dumberer. Hurts. Hurts. Remember that scene in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles where Steve Martin tries to rent a car and it's a disaster? Well, what happened to Kate Klonick is a bazillion times worse. She booked a rental car for Thanksgiving weekend in Brooklyn, went to pick it up. They closed the window on her after two hours, sent her to a bunch of other Hertz's. They didn't have cars, told her she was gonna have to pay about four times as much. Unbelievable. She finally got a filthy Kia for about twice what she originally was going to pay for. Hertz has apologized and refunded her only for the rate difference. She's a Gold Plus member. Come on, people. Dumberer, -er, this mysterious Amazon outage. Did you know one third of the internet runs on Amazon Web Services, and when it went out, all kinds of things went out, and they didn't really explain what happened, and then the explanation they have given requires an advanced degree. Dumberer is my favorite one. So many reporters fell for this hoax from somebody claiming to be Starbucks Cares, which looks like Starbucks Scares, saying that Starbucks was putting an end to dietary racism and removing the upcharges for plant-based milk, nut milk, almond milk, that sort of thing. I actually asked Starbucks, is this real? They said no. A lot of other reporters didn't ask. Up next is the political roundup, which is all over the place. I mean, on the right, you've got Republican congressmen competing with each other over their gun-toting family Christmas cards days after school massacre, only to be topped by powerful Republican congressman Devin Nunes quitting his job to go join the Trump media organization, even though he has no experience in that. He's a dairy farmer. And the media organization SPAC is being investigated. And the dumbest part of all is if you think Donald Trump is ever going to pay you. On the left, the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, apparently continued pressuring people to give him money, even though they had business before the city and even after he was told not to. And my favorite, the vice president of the United States of America is going to appear at an event emceed by Alec Baldwin. Next, Demerer is the president of Turkey who's come up with a Turkey of an idea thinking that if he keeps interest rates low, inflation will slow down. This is the opposite of what happens. Dumberer is me. I bought Bitcoin two weeks ago at the top. Dumberer, almost dumbest is, and you knew this was coming, CNN and Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo has an ego like, but the worst part of that isn't that he broke so many journalistic standards in trying to protect his brother. No, the worst part, the dumbest part was CNN and Jeff Zucker, who kept him on the air through all of this, even after he broke quarantine when he had COVID and pretended like he didn't. But dumbest of all is Vishal Garg. Never heard of him. He is the CEO of a company called Better.com and he better do better. It's a mortgage lending company and he fired 900 employees on Zoom. He later apologized for how insensitively it was done, but Fortune reports that he also went on an internal professional message board to complain about these same people saying they were lazy and stealing from others. That's not how you do it. But let's turn that frown upside down. Let's end on a high note. Here's a feel-good story out of Cincinnati where a Dunkin' Donuts drive through employee for the last three years was evicted during COVID with her and her children. A loyal customer heard about it and started working with local agencies. And after nine months, nine months, this woman, Ebony Johnson and her children got a new apartment. Their rent will be subsidized. Maybe Duncan ought to pay a living wage. That would mean we'd have to pay more for coffee and donuts. Okay.
Okay, let's just enjoy the story.